I moved to St. George, Utah in 2014, and here's what I have to say about living right here in St. George, Utah. For the sake of keeping this video straight and to a point, I broke it down into 10 distinctive categories. So this video is a review of what I would rank living here one through 10 based on those 10 distinctive categories so that hopefully my experience would be applicable to you. Item number five on this list might even shock you. So make sure to stay until the very end of this video. The location of this video is no mistake. A few years ago, we posted a video that started right here and I will link it up here that talks about my initial thoughts about living here. So be sure to check it out after you're done with watching this video. I wanted to make this video as unbiased as possible. However, I do need you to consider this, that this is my experience and my review. So some things may be unique to me, which you might view differently. So if, if there's something you disagree with or if there's other aspects that would be more important for you, I would love to hear them in the comments below. Some of you may have already guessed or may know from following this channel for a while, I was born in another country. When I was 10, my family immigrated to the US, and since then I have kind of lived all over the place. Lived in Wisconsin, Illinois, and then career took me to Fayetteville, North Carolina. After experiencing Southern hospitality for nearly four years, I could not wait to move to another place. So life put me to St. George, Utah, with original intentions to move to Las Vegas, but in hindsight, looking at things now, I feel so grateful that I ended up and stayed in Southern Utah. And following through the next 10 points of this video, I think it'll make more sense why, but I wanted to give you kind of an overlook to let you know that my review comes from a place of experience, having lived in many places through my youth and growing up in different places, I have something to compare this area to. But without further ado, let's dive into this video and break things down on a scale of one through 10 on the next 10 aspects that may be greatly affecting the quality of life of just about anybody that's considering moving to St. George, Utah. Employment is the number one item on the list of things that could either greatly contribute or take away from your St. George living experience. I was fortunate enough to relocate to St. George while already working for a large Fortune 15 company that did business nationally and even internationally, so I was able to keep my current employment when I started here in St. George, but it's only after moving here that I discovered my passion in real estate and in helping people buy, sell, invest, and relocate into this area, so I had changed careers after moving here. I would say overall employment situation in Southern Utah is not amazing because there isn't a ton of technology companies. There are no large corporations, no large manufacturing, blue collar jobs are somewhat limited. With that being said, there's no lack of opportunities and there are plenty of top earners that live here that make their living across several verticals. Small business owners, entrepreneurs, people in medical field, attorneys, as well as of recently, a large group of people that are able to telecommute to work and preserve their employment from wherever else they originally came to this area. Entry-level positions in Southern Utah yield very little income, making it pretty tough to survive given the cost of living here isn't the cheapest in the nation. Leaving those folks very little opportunity, such as working multiple jobs or relocating to a place with more affordable cost of living. With that being said, I will give St. George employment a rating of six out of 10, just given that we have some limitations right now. However, we're seeing a lot more tech companies and bigger companies bringing their business to Southern Utah and to this area. So there's definitely more hope of better wages and more opportunities in this area really soon. This leads me to point number two. Point number two is cost of living. Having lived in cities ranging in population from just 800 people to 12 million in Chicago, I have to say that the cost of living in St. George is considerably cheaper than living in Chicago and quite a bit more expensive than living in Fayetteville, North Carolina, for example. Housing is a big driver in the cost of living right here in St. George. And at the time of filming this video, the St. George metro area is exploding in population, so the demand is far outpacing supply. Right now, if you were to rent a typical three bedroom, two bathroom home, you could anticipate looking at rents anywhere from $2,000 to about $2,400. Median sale home price is at $583,000. And if you're trying to find something much below that, you'd be hard pressed to find anything great below $400. And the real interesting properties begin in sort of that $650 and above price range. So the cost of housing 
greatly contributes to the cost of living here overall. Fortunately, the property taxes right here in Southern Utah are quite a bit lower. If you own a primary residence anywhere in Washington County, you could expect to pay about a third of what you would have paid for a comparable property, say in Illinois or California. The utilities here are quite a bit cheaper than most other places that I have ever lived. For an average, roughly 3,000 square foot home, you could expect to pay anywhere from three to about 350 a month in your total utilities. That includes electricity, water, sewer, natural gas, and trash removal. Cost of fuel is roughly the same to about the rest of the United States. Gasoline right now for premium is around 439. I think diesel is a little more than that, so it's right in line with the rest of the US. One great thing about St. George is you don't have to open your wallet every time you leave the house. I used to have that feeling when I lived in Chicago and I felt like if I get invited to go anywhere with friends, if I go anywhere, I have to pay for parking, I have to buy somebody a meal, somebody's gonna buy me a meal, I'm gonna have to reciprocate in that favor. And pretty much any form of entertainment in a big city usually comes with parking, drinks, food, and expenses to attend that venue. While Southern Utah has so many options for entertainment that don't cost you a penny. Overall, I would say it would require at least a six-figure income in order to be able to live in St. George, Utah comfortably. Now, unless you were able to earn that six-figure income somewhere else, or if you have the skills that would allow you to just jump right in and make that happen here, hopes of new six-figure income may be somewhat limited in Southern Utah, so that makes it a little bit more challenging. And with that being said, having lived in different communities, I feel that you usually have to pay for a desirable place to live. So years ago, St. George used to be a great bang for the buck alternative. Now you definitely have to pay to live here, so it's not the cheapest place that you could move to, but it's definitely gonna be much cheaper than any desirable large city. I don't know if that's an oxymoron in 2023. Are there any desirable large cities? If you could think of one, drop it in the comments below. But historically speaking, a desirable large city comes with a cost and people are willing to pay to live there. And this is what Southern Utah has turned into. So if you're thinking about moving here for the bang for the buck, think twice. This place will definitely not disappoint, but it isn't the cheapest place that you could move to in 2023. My conclusion for the cost of living is this. I would give St. George, Utah a solid eight out of 10 star review for the cost of living because what you get for the money is quite great. It is something that people haven't been able to or unable to get in other parts of our beautiful country right now while spending even more. And I think that you'll see in some of the other points that what you pay for here is often unattainable at places that cost twice as much. Item number three on my list is the crime rate. Is St. George a safe place to live? Well, it's kind of interesting because as you put things in perspective, I feel like we adopt to live wherever it is that we're comfortable and eventually we become comfortable with the crime rate that exists. And it saddens me to note that majority of major US cities are absolutely overran by violent gangs and the madness that happens is allowed to happen primarily because of the laws that are being made. Utah is a red state, as you guys probably already know, which means that laws here are still fairly normal. St. George has a fully staffed police department and they definitely crack down on crime. Some things that you will definitely not see in a city is graffiti on the walls. You will not see a very large homeless population, even in downtown areas and more transient parts of town. And another tough question for me to answer is when people ask me for where is the rough part of town, Nick? We're moving to St. George, what areas should we avoid? I feel that there isn't really a part of St. George that's really rough or known for being rough. So crime, solid 10 out of 10. This whole next section of this video is about people. How would I rank the people that live in Southern Utah and in St. George? There's a lot to unpack here. So I'll, I'll try to kind of give you guys cliff notes and bullet points of my experiences. And, and let's address the elephant in the room. It seems to be the number one question that a lot of people that watch this channel that uh, reach out to us, ask us, how is it 
having Mormon as a neighbor? And what happens if I happen to not be a Mormon myself? Well, I'll, I'll start out by saying that pretty much nobody really cares what your religious affiliation is. If you're a great person, you'll be accepted one way or the other. And if you're not, well, then you might have a hard time making friends. Mormons happen to be some of the greatest neighbors as they're super friendly and they're always there when you need them, but they also tend to kind of keep to themselves and not get into your business too much. My personal experience, having lived in different parts of the country, I learned that Southern hospitality is a myth after living in North Carolina. And I always like to learn these quirky things that are being said about any particular area. So in case of the Mormons, about 98% of everything you're hearing is probably a lie. And maybe that's a well-kept secret to keep some people out of here. But speaking numbers, it did not uh, help displacement of the state of California as about a third of its residents are here right now. In my personal experience, my personal relationships, business relationships, and some of my best friends were made here. And I'm continuing to meet incredible people in Southern Utah. Met my wife here and definitely met all of my best friends here. So based on that, I would give the people category a ranking of 10 out of 10. So what is love life and dating like in Southern Utah? Well, I don't have the largest sample size in Southern Utah. I would say it's the quality over quantity for me here because I met my wife right here in St. George. And I would say that based on my experience, the girls in Southern Utah are a lot more attractive and humble versus girls I've met in other parts of the country. Again, girls don't get mad at me. This is just purely my experience. And I'm sharing it with you raw, uncut, unedited, and basically the way it happened to me. Interesting thing about Southern Utah is that I would say between St. George, Washington, Ivins, and Santa Clara, we probably have the most gyms per capita. And the combination of gyms, combination of good weather and lots of outdoor activities is definitely helping keep people in better shape and therefore more attractive. And I find that when there is greater competition, just in general, you know, when when you look at an average person and they are not in shape and not super attractive and you happen to be one that's superficially attractive, naturally your your perceived value of self goes up, right? And I'm all about people having great self-esteem and believing in themselves, but when you are a 10 in a sea full of force, it does not help the overall quality of your character as it turns out. But when you're a 10 in a sea full of 10s, you feel like you should also have a 10 personality. Based on personal experience, I would give St. George 10 out of 10 in that metric. We have helped a variety of folks move into this area of all ages, all walks of life. And I would say while the dating pool in Southern Utah may not be as robust as some larger community, again, it's the quality over quantity. And if you're thinking about moving into this area single, I wouldn't be so worried about meeting people. You will definitely find somebody that will hopefully check all the boxes for you the way Michonne did for me. Item number six on our list is St. George Nightlife. Now they got you guys all excited by mentioning things in point number five. You may say, Nick, where is it that people go in St. George, Utah to meet other people? And the answer is, well, just about anywhere other than your traditional bars and clubs, because there aren't that many in this area. And St. George is certainly not known for its robust nightlife. And that, that isn't the reason why people are moving here. However, if you have a special occasion and you're thinking about going somewhere for a night out in town, Las Vegas Strip is exactly 119 miles south of St. George. You could go there, hang out, party, have a great time, spend a long weekend, and come back to beautiful, clean, sunny St. George. With that being said, there are quite a few nice establishments that are opening up here. And up until recently, it was pretty difficult to get a full liquor license in Southern Utah, so we didn't have too many 
establishments that carried a full liquor license, but now we have a handful, as well as some upscale restaurants. So my subjective opinion of St. George's nightlife would be a 10 out of 10. Number seven on our list is the weather. It gets really hot here. Sometimes it gets freezing. It almost never rains, but when it does, it really pours and it practically never snows here. So having experienced brutally cold winters in the Midwest and monsoon seasons in the Southeast, I would say that a handful of warmer weeks during the summer throughout the months of July, August, and September with a handful of cooler weeks in January and February are well worth it. It is a small price to pay for nearly 300 days of sunshine and a mild desert climate. St. George and most of Southern Utah is a high desert and in the high desert, you get a few more weather perks. For instance, even if it gets really hot in the dead of summer, you're still able to take your bulldogs on a walk. And if you don't happen to have bulldogs like we do, these guys will absolutely die if it gets even a degree over 70 degrees. But because we live in a high desert and the second the sun goes down, the temps really do drop here, giving you a little bit more time to enjoy outside even when it's really hot. Another perk of high desert is that if you don't like the weather, you can simply drive 20 minutes to the south and end up in Mesquite, Nevada, and it gets nearly 20 degrees warmer because somebody had a really loud bike. It gets nearly 20 degrees warmer because you're about a thousand feet lower below, or because you're about a thousand feet lower above sea level. Or if you don't like the summer heat, you could travel just 40 miles north and gain about 4,000 feet in elevation, getting closer in temps to Denver, Colorado. Maybe a subjective opinion, but for me, St. George weather gets a ranking of 10 out of 10. Item number eight on our list is the fun factor. Are there fun things to do in St. George, Utah? If you're into any sort of outdoor activities or any form of motorsports, maybe into golf or hiking or biking, Southern Utah is a perfect place to be. See, what's incredible about living here is in the same day, you could go from snowboarding and skiing at Brian Head and to golfing or boating at San Hollow. What's incredible about this area is the climate changes so much within just a 50 mile drive. So on the same day, you're able to enjoy all these things and go from playing the snow to playing golf or ripping up on a dirt bike or side by side or going wheeling out in Warner Valley. If you're into boating, Sand Hollow and Quail Creek are absolutely perfect for doing pretty much any water sport activity and the conditions are usually perfect. Summertime here is the longest and the sunniest, so it is perfect for boating. During winter, fall, and spring, you can enjoy some hikes, golfing, or pretty much any sort of outdoor activities. So in my personal biased opinion, St. George, Utah gets a rating of 10 out of 10 for Fun Factor. Now, normally at this point of a video is where I would insert a call to action. Right here is where I would tell you that if you're even remotely considering moving to Southern Utah, our team is number one in assisting clients with relocating right here to St. George. And then I would tell you that I would link my contact information in the description below this video, and I still will. But for the sake of this video, my call to action is this. I would like to challenge you to whip out a pen and paper and analyze your life on a scale of one to 10, and then just see where you're at. If you're not happy, Pull out your phone, get in contact with me, and let's take massive action together in seeing if St. George could make that a 10 out of 10 for you. Now, I would be totally lying if I said that St. George, Utah is for everybody, and I will tell you all about that in the next video. So be sure to smash that subscribe button and the notification bell right next to it, because that is the only way that I know of how you could absolutely be sure to not miss that video. Item number nine on my review list is food because, well, food's important. 
I would say St. George food scene has drastically improved since I first moved here. We're seeing a lot more boutique style restaurants and higher end dining downtown St. George. But if you're thinking about grabbing a dinner during regular dinner hours, you're likely going to have to earn your meal by standing in line. See, the local employee population hasn't quite grown up to the speed of the population growth uh, amongst people that attend these restaurants. So my personal favorite life hack is dining during senior hours. So if you dine out before 5 p.m., you typically don't have to battle the crowds. And between Uber Eats and DoorDash, deliveries are made pretty easy and usually within 30 to 45 minutes. If you prefer to cook at home, there are a couple of great options for organic produce between natural grocers and Harmons. So with that being said, because our food scene is still catching up to the population, I will give St. George a solid rating of seven out of 10. Although I am very excited to see more dining options come to the area. Item number 10 on our list is an overall feeling. How does living in St. George make me feel? And this one might be a little tough to convey, but I'm sure many of you can relate to having a feeling associated with a city or a place. Like certain cities are just downright depressing, while others make you feel warm and fuzzy inside. Personally, for me, St. George has always felt like home. I absolutely love living here. When I lived in the Midwest, I often got excited and intrigued by cross-country trips and it often inspired me to think about living somewhere else. When I lived in North Carolina, I could not wait. I simply could not wait to live Fayetteville for the weekend just so I could have a change of scenery. Any times that we live St. George, we're super excited to come back just based on how it makes us feel overall. Warm weather, friendly neighbors, virtually zero crime. In modern America, what more could you possibly ask for? So based on Nick's feeling score, St. George ranks a 10 out of 10. I would highly recommend living here. So to tell you up our rankings, we had a total of 10 categories, scoring 91 points across the board, giving St. George a ranking of 9.1 out of 10. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with a friend, give it a thumbs up, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already done so.